Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Rich Black Dog Podcast. My name is Claudia Pascal and we have made it to episode seven and I honestly cannot believe it. I'm just super grateful that I finally got over my analysis paralysis and started this journey, started sharing. A friend of mine was sharing the other day how she listened to the episode and it was just encouraging her and a little stuff that she's been taking towards her financial freedom. And that meant the world to me because that honestly is my passion and the reason why I'm even doing this podcast and sharing on Instagram and just trying to, you know, share more of what my husband and I have been doing. And it's all for the purpose of being able to help more of us, especially young Black doctors, realize that we have the ability to serve on our own terms when it comes to our careers to enjoy fulfilling lives, and to create our powerful legacies simultaneously by pursuing financial freedom, by intentionally identifying ways to create passive income, create wealth, and not just rely on our active earning status, our high income active earning status at that. So, If any of that resonates with you, join me, share this with others so they can join us so that we can indeed keep moving forward as rich black docs who are going to be making sure that we set ourselves up to not just change lives, but to change legacies for generations to come. With that said, those of you who are watching this on YouTube realize that my background is different. And that's because I decided to switch it up and record in my living room today. And this is the living room in the house that my husband and I have been hacking for going on three years now. So as I shared in the past episodes. Um, we bought our first home with the purpose of hacking this home so that we could kick off our journey to financial freedom. And it honestly have, has been a success thus far, and it has been a blessing. And um, I, in the past episodes, I shared why I believe house hacking is one of the best and most strategic ways to get into real estate, which is one of the long-standing pillars of generational wealth creation. And in the last episode, I talked about some things that we want to especially keep in mind as we're embarking on the home buying process. Today, I want to talk about being a landlord. (laughs) This is something that I feel turns many people away from the idea of having a rental property and the idea of house hacking in and of itself. Because when you house hack, you are in fact, going to be a landlord. But my goal is that by the end of this episode, you will realize that it is not as bad as people make it to be when it comes to being a landlord and hacking your house or property. I actually love being a landlord for many reasons. Not just the fact that it is bringing me income and literally giving me an asset that is going to be instrumental to my financial freedom and to the legacy that I'm wanting to create. And that has been extremely, extremely a game changer when it came to me being able to do what was necessary for my health. But it also has allowed me to meet amazing people like Amazing. Like I have been grateful for each one of my tenants. The things that I have learned and the, the, the great moments that I've had with them, um, are moments that I will really, I don't regret, you know? Now, with that said, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's all just a breeze, right? I want to also be very honest about what comes with being a landlord and That's what I'm going to be sharing with you all today as we talk about, is being a landlord more work? We've been talking a lot about mindset and mindset truly makes the world of a difference in everything that we do. And of course, it does when it comes to the idea of being a landlord. When we were initially talking about getting into house hacking, There were three main things that I was just really apprehensive about. The first thing was just having people in my space. I just was like, man, 
I, I just know that there are going to be some days where I don't want to walk around in my home and have to see someone there and let alone not just see them, but have to interact with them, especially if I don't feel like it. Like I genuinely was like mad. It's like, I love people. I enjoy people. I mean, I've gone into a profession where I'm working with people. I do enjoy it, but it's not always I'm trying to be around other people. And, you know, your home typically is a place where you want to have that ability to get away and just like let loose, be free <laughs> and always and not worry about other people. But the reality is if you're hacking a home that is a primary residence and you're renting out the rooms, you are going to have to deal with seeing people in your space. There's no way around it. If you go the multifamily route and you end up renting other units, none of this really matters. You're probably just going to see these people in your space, in your outside space, which we all do in wherever we live, especially if it's in some kind of apartment, apartment and things of that sort. However, with it being in your primary residence, you're going to see people in your kitchen. You're going to see people out in your living room. Um, and many times they will want to sit and talk or share something and things of the sort. And does that sometimes take more energy? Absolutely. It really does take energy. But the beautiful thing about it is that you can easily be honest. You can walk away. Um, you can be like us and try to <laughs> gauge you know, what time they're usually in the kitchen. So you could try to get your cooking done before then or plan to get it done after that time. Um, things like that. Walk out with some headphones in your ears so, you know, they can get the picture. You're not trying to talk or anything like that. Like, y'all listen, we can make it work, okay? If if this is, is what you got to deal with to have this person be paying towards your mortgage and towards your financial freedom, trust me, right? We can make a way. Creativity follows commitment. We, we we can get creative, okay? And honestly, it's not even something that we dealt with all the time. Why? Because many times our tenants are travel nurses who are not just out chilling. They're usually cooking and planning their meal prep, getting their meal prep together and leaving. Um, or they're sleeping or they're at work. Um, the few times we've had more students, um, uh, more like a student situation, we may bump into them occasionally, but honestly, you guys, it, it really is rare. Like those, like, yes, you may see people in your home, but the chances are really rare. And because they're most likely busy themselves with work or with school or with residency, whoever it is that you're renting to, they're probably not just trying to chill and have fun and just talk. They're not trying to be your best friend, okay? And like I said, even if they are, you can make it really clear that you're not here for that, right? Like respectfully and cordially, just be in and out about your business, and um, and and it it, it does it's, it it can it doesn't have to be um a a burden. It really doesn't. Nine times out of ten, this house is exactly the way it is right now quiet, nothing going on, no one out and about because we would often be at work or school or in a hospital and same thing for our tenants. And many times when we have travel nurses who work in a night shift, when we were coming home, they were heading out. So honestly, yes, you will be sharing your space. Yes, you will be seeing people in your space, but depending on your tenants and how you set up your environment and who you bring into your environment, because if you do bring friends, then yes, it's going to be a different story. But nonetheless, you have the ability to really control how much that can impact you and you know your enjoyment and experience of the process. So that was one thing that I was concerned about. And that honestly, like I said, it's not a deal breaker and it's not something that... um would ever make me feel like, oh, this was a, a this be a house hacking was um, a bad decision. Never will I say that. I appreciate the people that I have been able to meet. I honestly um, have learned things from them, and even have been able to share with them because they literally would end up asking my husband and I, like, you know, so you guys look young. You're doctors slash resident medical student. Like, how are you doing this? And we end up sharing with them like about our journey, financial freedom. And most of them are like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Like, I think I want to 
do the same thing too. Even if it's not house hacking, just looking into how to pursue financial freedom. And that to me to, and uh, my husband means so much. Like being able to drop some seeds and be an example of how no matter how young you are, no matter how little you think you have, like there's ways to start your journey to financial freedom. So the second thing that I was concerned about when it came to house hacking was having people that I don't get along with which kind of latches on to having to deal with people in your space. But we personally haven't had anyone that we have heavily clashed with and didn't really get along with. Um, it, so I think what made me concerned about having someone that I don't get along with was me thinking that, oh, I'm going to be interacting with these people all the time. So if we don't get along, it's going to be a stressful thing. But as I shared before, I'm not interacting with the people all the time. And even in the few times where I may be in the same vicinity as them, we can keep like conversations are limited and it's it's easy as saying, hey, let me just come back a different time. Or, you know, even if you want to set a schedule with your housemates, say, okay, what's the time you usually cook, et cetera. So honestly, I feel like that second concern of not getting on with people for me became invalid when I realized how little I even interacted with people to begin with. And once again, we are not doing this trying to gain best friends. We're not doing this because we're trying to grow relationships with anyone. We are all just trying to have a place to live that is peaceful, that is quiet, that is close enough to the hospitals, the schools that we work in, that we go to, and can live our lives. That's that's usually what our tenants want. It's what we want. And no one is taking anything personal, trying to be BFFs or anything like that. So if you don't go in with that mindset, if you're not trying to be creating relationships and stuff, nine times out of 10, that's not even going to be a concern for real. And just remember that you also are signing a lease with a person. So I didn't really talk about that, but you're signing a lease agreement with your tenants. And I highly recommend doing month to month, even if they tell you they want to stay, if they have a three month contract with the hospital, like travel nurses, often their contracts are like three months at a time. Or you may have a student that's trying to stay for the semester, or you may have a just a random professional person period who wants to stay for a year like we had. You can still set the lease to be month to month and make it clear to them that if things don't work out, you know, for on any person's part, this lease can be severed, right? Um, and that kind of protects you from feeling like, oh my goodness, I have to put up with this for this much longer because of a contract. It does not have to be the case. So just keep that in mind and being transparent and upfront when it comes to your rules, your expectations, and how you're going to resolve issues and things of that sort. The last thing that I was also very concerned about was people um, being disrespectful to my property or not disrespectful to my property, but, um, like people being like, I, when, I was just concerned about people not respecting the furniture that I provide for them, not taking care of the furniture and, um, doing damage more than, you know, you would expect for simple like use and um, being messy. I was really concerned about dealing with those kind of issues when it came to having tenants. And um, thankfully, we have not had to deal with that at all. And once again, if it was to occur, you have the lease, you have your you know, you lay out in your lease, what are your terms and expectations? You have your um, deposits that are refundable unless the person has done damage. And, you know, there's ways to handle all of this. Um, but one thing I just want to reiterate is the fact that when you set yourself up and you advertise yourself properly and you attract the right tenants, nine times out of 10, you guys, you will not be dealing with this. You're going to be dealing with professionals with mature adults who will be respectful of your rules, respectful of your property and um, make it an easy process for you, making it a passive process for you where you're having to put little energy and work in. You simply really just only have to make sure your contract is taken care of and that your tenants are okay. The things that you say you're going to provide for them, if you say you're going to have a toaster and um, 
coffee maker available for them, you just make sure it's available. And if it's not working, then yeah, you go ahead and replace it just like you would if your own thing wasn't working, right? So you do have to be more considerate of your guests in your home. You can't just be having things lying around and doing whatever you want to do as if it is just your place. But communication is important. Lay out your expectations, lay out how you want things to function in your home and be mature and and expect what that comes with from the other person. So if you do want to say, hey, we don't worry about dishes around here. We could just let it pile up. Hey, if you're saying that's how you function and you want to let them function like that, then don't be mad if that's what they do, right? But then if you say you expect people to keep things clean, wash all your dishes after yourself, then you have to also be responsible and make sure you are doing the same thing. So it honestly, um, it's the... <sighs> When it comes to being a landlord and having tenants who are co-residents, students, traveling professionals, the stress, the concerns, the work is minimal. You're just putting an extra effort to maintain um, favorable living standards for your tenants and therefore ultimately for yourself so that you can be able to just keep living, doing what you want to do while collecting the income that's going towards your financial freedom. I feel like one of the best ways to think about being a landlord is just think about like the extracurricular activities you did during undergrad and graduate school. I'm sure some of us have been leaders of clubs and organizations during school. Some of us have even started things ourselves. And guess what? That's us putting extra onto our plates, which already are filled with the work that we're having to do for the degrees that we are that we were pursuing right and if we were able to be a part of those clubs do those research projects um for some of us have those jobs all while per, um now while progressing through school and then successfully completing it you can also do the same thing when it comes to being a landlord of a house that you're hacking it's all a matter of realizing okay I am the leader. I'm the one responsible for seeing that all of this goes the way that it should and to see that the goals of this is met. How am I going to do that? I truly believe that many of us were able to successfully do that because we realized that planning and delegating were essential. And the same applies when it comes to being a landlord. You have to realize that you're taking the lead and you therefore have to make sure you plan carefully. You understand what the responsibilities are, what the expectations are of this task of being a landlord, of having a house where you're renting out to others. And you therefore plan how you're going to do that successfully. You're creating your checklist of things that have to be done by when they have to be done. Is on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, what has to be done by the end of the year. And then after you figure out what all needs to be done, you now start to delegate because you know that you cannot and you should not do it all on your own. You delegate, right? There are people who are on your team or who are ready to help you make things happen. And it's a matter of identifying those people and giving them those responsibilities. Same thing when it comes to being a landlord. You now have to say, okay, I am not, the house needs to be clean, but I'm not going to be the one to clean the house. I don't want to clean the house. I don't have to clean the house. Let me hire someone to clean the house to keep the common areas clean for me and my tenants. If something comes up like a toilet breaking, an AC breaking, whatever breaking, guess what? You can get you a handyman. You can call you someone to come and do this. You don't have to figure it out. You call someone so that they can come and do it. If you were renting, you would be doing the same thing. You would call your landlord and say this needs to be fixed and they do it. The only difference is now you're not calling a landlord. You're directly calling the person who needs to fix it. And then you have to just follow through and make sure it gets done. So you would probably call the landlord or the maintenance person if you were renting and say, hey, what's the update? What's the status on this? Same thing. When you're the owner, you just have to tell yourself, okay, because I'm the one running this and I have to make sure it successfully is done, let me call and check in and make sure it's actually being done. And then, yes, you will have to make the payment. 
When we lead out clubs and organizations in school, there's money involved, expenses involved. When we're planning the galas or whatever events, there's money involved. And guess what? We make the expenses, we make the reports, get our reimbursements, et cetera. Same thing when you have your house. Yes, there will be expenses that you will have to be more aware of because you're not renting. Yes, there's going to be extra things you're going to have to do like filing taxes to get your reimbursements and things of the sort. But you guys, there are people who can help you make this happen. And when you realize that it's just a matter of having a plan, being organized and delegating, you will see that you have everything it takes to successfully be a landlord with little to zero stress. I'm telling you, same way when you's going to run your organization or same way if you're going to do anything and you need to pick team members, you're going to pick solid people that's going to help you make it happen so that you're not stressed is the same way with the landlord. You make sure you create your solid team, identify the professionals that you need to make things happen. And that you guys, you are winning. You are literally coasting, living life, having your living expenses reduced or completely taken care of and investing in an asset, having an asset sit there that's going to serve you later and be taking you closer to your goal of financial freedom. It all comes back to mindset, as I said in the beginning. Isn't being a landlord more work? No, it is not more work if you realize that it is just simply an additional task and an additional commitment that you are adding for the sake of pursuing and fulfilling your goals. If you look at it as just extra work with no purpose, Yes, you're going to feel like it's more work. But if you look at it as an investment in you and in your goals, you're going to see it as an opportunity. You're going to see it as a benefit, as a privilege. Many of us was in groups and and many of us had extracurricular activities during undergrad and graduate school that was paying us nothing, but rather giving us an experience, giving us the opportunity to put our skills and talents to use, giving us the opportunity to boost up our profiles, our portfolios for when it came time to applying for the positions we wanted. Like, That's what it was giving back to us. For many of us, there was no money involved. And guess what? When you're a landlord, you get to probably do all those things that we just listed you were gaining from your extra curriculum. And and or the biggest thing that you're gaining is income. You are literally being a landlord for the sake of creating the generational wealth that you want. That's what it is all about. And when you see this as just a stepping stone to that and not necessarily a hurdle, it's a different conversation. More work is not a part of the vocabulary in terms of it being a difficult more work. Yes, it's going to take extra than what you would have done if you were just simply renting from a landlord and living the same way if through life we just did the basic we didn't pursue the extra things that we were doing in school we didn't pursue the other things that would have gave us a competitive edge when it came to us um having great looking good on paper the same way We had to make a choice about what we chose to pursue in life and what we choose to do every single day, right? The same way we have to make those choices, like, am I going to do this extra or am I not, is the same way with this house hacking. So from my personal experience, being a landlord does take extra uh, it, it is going to require for you to put in a bit more time. It is going to require for you to put in some more energy. And it is going to be an investment overall that's going to cost you. But what you have to realize is that it is an investment that will ultimately serve you. And if you can see it that way as something that is extra, but it's going to now give you extra and lead to extra in a way that benefits you, it will not seem like an unbearable and miserable task. You're going to see the value in it. You're going to see the worth in it. 
And it takes you realizing the value of you and the worthiness of you to make a decision to start something that's going to help you achieve your goals. Now, you may not decide to go into house hacking. You may not decide to do renting. And that's completely okay. Because as I always stress, my overall goal is to just help you realize that you can do something to help you move closer to your goal, to your needs, your desires when it comes to how you want to serve, how you want to live, and the legacy that you want to create. Financial freedom is foundational to all of that, and it is going to require putting in a little extra effort into those income streams and those opportunities that's going to lead us there. I'm super excited to be able to continue helping in any way that I can through this podcast and through the connections that we will make when it comes to pursuing financial freedom. Follow, subscribe if you haven't already done so. We have more great content coming to help you along on this journey so that we can be rich black dogs who are setting ourselves up to change lives lives and legacies for generations to come. Take care and I'll see you all in the next episode.